morning. Good to, to see everyone. Let's just um, speak to God in prayer. Father, we just give thanks for your word. We give thanks that we have um, your, your voice, Father, you've spoken to us in our own language and words that we can understand. And we give thanks for the lessons you have for us. We pray that as we hear the words of the Lord Jesus this morning, uh, and we listen to what he has to say to us, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. And we pray that we would be open to listen uh, and to put these things into practice. We just give thanks for this day and give thanks for this opportunity. And we ask that you just quieten our hearts just now as you would speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, as I, Lewis was saying today, we want to think about value today. What is it you value in your life? What do you prize? Uh, and what do you place as the most kind of important things in your life? Uh, and in the section that, that Cammy read to us from Matthew chapter 6, that's what the Lord Jesus uh, is thinking about this morning. I want to, I'll give you a, a little illustration. I don't know if you can see that very well. In the top there, top there, I don't know if you know what that is, if you're a, a boy of my age. Um, those are video games, um, Nintendo 64 video games. I had a big collection um, just growing up, um, and I enjoyed playing them. And last year, I, I don't really use them anymore, so I decided I'd go and sell them online. Um, so I got a big collection together um, and went online and, and put them up for, for people to, to buy them. And it was strange because the ones that I really enjoyed playing and uh, my favorite games that I would go and sell they didn't really make much money. Um, and some of the other ones that I didn't really play very much and just had sitting about, they were really, really popular uh, and everybody liked them. Um, so it just shows you, it, we all value different things, don't we? And we all put value in, and put treasure in, in different places. Um, I don't watch this show at all very well. Um, my friend um, back home, uh, when we were a teenager, he used to say he was really 50 in disguise, but he used to love this show, um, The Antiques Road Trip. Um, and used to follow him about. Sometimes I see it, if I'm watching Pointless, I do like Pointless. Um, it's it, sometimes you get the, the end of the program just before Pointless starts. Uh, and they go about and they, they get, they buy antiques uh, and they value them and then they sell them on and then they try and make a bit of money off them. Uh, and the whole show is about this, it's about finding value in things and things people treasure. And you sometimes get something that's been in somebody's attic for years and years and years. Uh, and sometimes it makes a lot of money uh, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and they're trying to see what things has value. Well, the Lord Jesus challenges, challenges us this morning um, as he speaks to us. What do we value most in our life? What do we prize above everything else? Uh, and what is our hearts after? What is the most important thing in our lives? Uh, is it temporal things? And all these things we've thought about, the antiques and the video games, they're, they're temporal, aren't they? They only last for a short amount of time. Or do we value eternal things? Do we value things that last forever. That's the challenge the Lord Jesus has for us this morning. So the context, but again, we're on the, the Sermon on the Mount, um, and we've been thinking about the, the Sermon on the Mount over the last few sessions of teaching, um, and we're looking at Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And just to set the scene for you again, Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he gathers them all together. Um, that picture is not very good. I couldn't find the right picture online, but I, I reckon this is maybe a, a year into the Lord Jesus teaching. We're not exactly sure when Matthew comes along, but there was thousands of people there. And this is big crowds of people came to hear the Lord Jesus and to listen to them. And he sat down, and rabbis in Jewish culture would sit down, and all the people would sit round about him, and he would begin his teaching. And in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, Matthew records the teachings of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus is very practical. He teaches about his kingdom coming into the world, and he teaches about things that impact all areas of our life. We've thought over the last few weeks, haven't we, about um, loving our enemies, about forgiving people, about praying, about fasting, things that impact all of us, about money, um, different parts of our life. The Lord Jesus teaches us. John Stock called this the Christian counterculture because the Lord Jesus changes everything upside down. The values that we hold, Jesus really challenges them uh, and tells us to, to search them and see what's really important. John Riddle, who is a preacher I knew from England, he used to talk about this is the King's Manifesto. Um, you get a political manifesto that, from all the politicians. We had the elections a few weeks ago, and they lay out exactly what they want for the country. Well, this is Jesus is the king. Matthew is, is telling us about the king of kings, uh, and he gives us his instructions for how he wants the world to work and how his followers should behave. This is the manifesto of the king. Uh, and this morning, we're thinking about treasure, and we're thinking about things that we value in our lives. Where is our treasure? Um, 
where do we value um, transient and, and material things? The Lord Jesus talks about treasure there. He says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And I think back in those days when you were in a house, if you had your valuables, your, your treasure, the, 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 the things you possessed and, and prized most about everything else you own, you would hide them, you would bury them under the ground so that thieves couldn't find them. And that's where you would hold all your valuable things. You would know where they would be buried. When I worked for the, the bank um, years ago, there was um, these things here. These are safety deposit boxes. Banks don't really do them anymore. Um, but used to have, when I, when I started, um, there was a few of them in the back somewhere and it, usually somebody who was older had had them there and they had no idea what was in them anymore. They'd been sitting in the branch for years and years. And when we stopped doing them, we, were, we had all these old ones that we had to kind of get rid of and, and try and phone people and find out what was in them. And you used to think it'd be really exciting, like, like the born identity, it'd be loads of different passports and money and different currencies and things. But it wasn't like that. It was always quite boring um, and things that people found valuable, though, and they wanted to store them and keep them. And I suppose nowadays we've got insurance, don't we? We've got um, savings accounts. We've got securities. We've got our house. We've got all these things that we treasure, all these things that we value. But what's the most important thing? What happens if your house is on fire and you need to run in and grab the, the thing that matters to you most to save it? What is the most important thing in your life? And this is where the Lord Jesus challenges us. What do we value most in our lives? You know, our culture today is very empty, isn't it? It's very vacuous. We, we're very materialistic. Um, every one of us, we, we focus on a lot of material things, all the adverts and, and people selling things and security. Uh, and people are quite house proud as well, the things in our house that we hold on to. Uh, and we just, we value these things. And there's so much stuff in our lives, isn't it? When we move or we go somewhere, there's so much stuff to gather uh, and so much stuff that we acquire and we have. Uh, and sometimes we value these things too much. Uh, and the Lord Jesus really challenges us this morning, what do we value and what do we care about the most? You know, the Lord Jesus says that the thing that we care about, that's where our heart is, where our treasure is, what we value the most in our lives, that's where our hearts are. And that's where we put the most attention to and that's where we focus on and everything in our life becomes about those things. And the Lord Jesus really challenges us. We need to care about eternal things rather than temporal things. What really matters are things that last forever, things that are really important, not things that disappear, that the moth and, and the rust destroy and the thief comes and takes away. And when we die, these things, we, we lose them, don't we? We can't take them with us. We need to think about eternal things and things that really matter. What is it matters to God and what should matter in our life? Do we care about our souls? Do we care about our, our, our real selves before God? Do we care about our relationship with God, about praying to him, about speaking to him? Do we care about other people? Do we think about their souls uh, as well and, and reaching out to other people? Do we value people more than things? What do we really value uh, and store as important in our lives? The Lord Jesus challenges us to value these eternal things, to care about what God cares about. He says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's the first challenge this morning, to care about eternal things rather than temporal things and to prize eternal things more than temporal things, to think about these things. But the Lord Jesus moves on uh, and he begins to talk about what we let in to our lives. He gives this parable here, says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, the whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are, are unhealthy, your body will be full of darkness. What do we let into ourselves? Not just our eyes, but our eyes, our ears, our minds. What do we let come into our lives and into our hearts? And it's kind of like the eyes are kind of like a window inside of us. So if you think of a window and um, the house is dark, but if you open the window, it lets the light come in. What kind of things come in to our lives? And we need to be careful about what we watch and what things come in. In the Bible, there's lots of examples of this. If you think of the, the fruit in the Garden of Eden, um, Adam and Eve were there, and there was the fruit of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they weren't, God told them they weren't to go near it. Um, but it says that Eve and Adam looked at it, and when they looked at it, they saw with their eyes that it was good for food, and that they were letting that into their eyes. That was, they lusted after it. If you think of Samson, Samson was the, the strong man before God, but he was morally very weak. 
and he went after lots of different women uh, and he went after Delilah and he went after um, different prostitutes and it ruined Samson at the end of the day. Samson, it was all about his lust. Everything he saw, he had to take. The same with David. David saw Bathsheba on the balcony and he ruined his kingdom. Um, he broke everything. He murdered a man just because he saw something that he wanted and he wanted to take it. We need to be very careful about what I see and what we want and what we covet and what we look after. And nowadays, isn't it? We've got television, we've got the internet, we've got all these different things vying for our attention uh, and people trying to sell us things, people trying to um, appeal to us. Uh, and it's all about what we see. We need to be really careful about what we watch, don't we? When we're on our own and we've got the internet there and there's no one else there, and we're just a few clicks away from things that are really harmful and things we shouldn't be watching. And the Lord Jesus challenges us, be careful what comes into our eyes and be careful what comes inside into our hearts and just be careful about what we watch and what we see. Worrying about these eternal things, we need to be careful what we let in. And these things can poison us. These things can um, really harm us and damage us. The Lord Jesus then goes on to talk about money. And you might think it's a bit random when he goes on to, to speak about it. You cannot serve two masters. I will hate one or love the other. You cannot serve God and money. But really, um, it, it seems a bit of a random jump. But if you think about it logically, you know, you can measure what's most important to our hearts. Um, what, what do we value most? You can measure that by what we actually spend our money on. And the things that we spend our money on and the things that we pay our money for, that's what the things that are most important to us. Uh, and the Lord Jesus is getting very personal now. He's speaking directly to us. Ken mentioned this last week. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't compromise between things. Something has to be the most important. Uh, and yeah, money isn't important for day-to-day -day things. Uh, and we need it. We all use it. Um, but what is the most important things to our life? That's a big test of what is the most important. You know, the Lord Jesus gets very uncomfortable, doesn't he? Um, and he speaks to things that we are really care about in our hearts. Uh, and we need to make a choice. Um, all of us that this morning, we need to decide what is the most important thing in our lives. What do we value above everything else? If you think about that, that affects everything. What about our giving? What about our helping people? Um, what about our possessions? What about our pockets? Everything that we have, Jesus gets uncomfortable. And, and he's interested in all of our lives. He cares about all of us and everything about us. And he challenges us, what do we spend our money on? Uh, and what do we value? Uh, and what do we care about? As you go on, you'll get to Matthew chapter 7, and the Lord Jesus begins to divide the crowd into two groups, and he'll tell all these different parables. You get the wise and the foolish builders, you'll get the good fruit and the bad fruit, and he splits the crowd into these two groups. All of us need to make a choice as we hear the words of the Lord Jesus. It challenges us to take a stand. We can't just hear this and ignore it, and we can't compromise in the middle. We need to decide what we value most and what we care about in this life. And the Lord Jesus challenges us to value these eternal things and to care about what he cares about. And then he goes on to talk about worry. And he says, do not worry. And I don't know about you, but this is where, I, this is where it challenges me. I find this really difficult, not to worry about things, not to care about things. He says, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you wear. Is life not more than food and the body not more than clothes? And again, it's these material things, isn't it? The things that are, are around us, the, the things that we worry about. I wonder how much of you worry about these kind of things. If you're anything like me, um, you worry about these material things. Who's got a to-do list for the rest of this week? Who's got priorities uh, and lots of things that we need to get through, lots of things that we worry about? Um, who keeps going over that to-do list again and again through their heads, making sure they've ticked off everything? He, who's sitting here thinking this morning, well, I've got that on Monday, I've got that on Tuesday, I need to do that by Wednesday. Um, if you're anything like me, you worry all the time, and I'm like that. And the Lord Jesus really challenges us. What is it that we're worrying about? And he tells us to let go. You know, it's about trust. Um, the Lord Jesus is asking us to trust him, to trust him with everything in our lives and not to worry about these things, to let go uh, and to trust him. He tells the, the two tales there, one about the birds, um, that they, they don't worry about these things and yet the Lord looks after them. And the flowers, they don't worry about clothing, um, but God looks after them as well. What do we worry about in our lives? Um, don't misunderstand the Lord Jesus. He's not teaching carelessness or recklessness. He's not teaching just don't have any responsibilities at all and just don't bother about anything in life. You will have responsibilities in life. All of us do. Uh, and it's right that we have those. And some of those are given to us by God as well. And it's right that we pay attention to those things. 
But worry is when we hold on to those things. Worry is when we don't let go of them and we keep thinking about them again and again. We, we, all of our life becomes about those things. We make an idol out of them. God cares about us this morning uh, and he commands us not to, to worry about these things. If you, if you forget everything else I've said, I want you to remember this this morning. God loves you uh, and God cares about you as an individual. Every one of us, God loves us and he cares for us and he cares about everything in our life. This picture here, um, just to impress you, I drew this, and um, this is a picture of flowers. Um, we had um, the art class over the year, and I've really enjoyed going along to the art class. I'd recommend it. If you're free on Wednesday at one o'clock, please go along. I wasn't always able to do a picture. I was quite busy um, through the year, but one of the times, it was this verse we were looking at, um, and it just kind of jumped out at me that, that God created the flowers, and he planned all of them. If you think of somewhere in the world, there, there'll be a field of flowers that nobody's ever been to, and it's been set as wildflowers, Thousands of years it's been there, and every season there's new flowers come every year, and all the flowers are a little bit different, but they're all kind of the same, so they're all quite same, but they're all unique. Every one of them is a little bit different, and what that means is that God created this field. He made it, and he created each one of the flowers a little bit different from all the other ones, and that just shows us something about God's character. God cares and values about all these flowers, and he spends time doing each one of them different. Can you, have you ever done something where you've got a spreadsheet or something and you have to go through each thing individually and it takes time to do each thing and, and the, the, the attention that it takes? That's what God has done for creation. God spends time and attention on these things. And the Lord Jesus says that we are more valuable than these flowers. God has made each one of us unique. He's made each one of us individual. And he's brought about all the things in our life because he cares about us. He made us, he formed us, and he values us. And he asks us to trust him. He asks us not to worry about the things in our life, but to come to him in prayer, to speak to him and to bring these things before him. He cares about us. And trust means that we, we let things go. We trust that God has the best um, in mind for us. You know, over the, the, the course of this year and um, with COVID, it's maybe been a lesson that we, we don't have control over the things we think we've got control over, don't we? And there's things in our life we think that we control, we think we're in charge of, and suddenly this virus comes along and everything stops and everything shuts down, and we realize that there's a lot of our lives we don't have control over at all, and the Lord Jesus says that it's pointless to worry about these things. The Lord Jesus encourages us to trust in God. God has control over these things. God has a plan, and he's planned out all of the days of our lives, and he asks us to trust. He asks us to come and to pray to him. I'll read a few verses from Ecclesiastes um, just now that gives us this idea and um, this is from the kind of wisdom literature of the old testament um, and when we don't stop worrying about things but we trust in god this is what the writer says in ecclesiastes chapter 9 go eat your food with gladness drink your wine with a joyful heart for god has already approved what you do always be clothed in white always anoint your head with oil enjoy life with your wife whom you love all the days of the meaningless life that god has given you under the sun for this is your lot in life, and this is your toilsome labor under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For the realm of the dead, where you're going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. God's made us to enjoy him and to worship him and to enjoy the things in life that he's given us, to trust in him and not to worry about things that are out with our control, but to have that relationship with him. And if we have that, everything in our life begins to make sense and we can praise him. We can give thanks for the, the wonderful day that he's given us. We can give thanks for all the good things that come from God that we enjoy each day. The Lord Jesus encourages us not to worry, but to trust in God. And then toward the end, the Lord Jesus gives us this verse that I think sums up everything that he's been saying. He says this, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. The Lord Jesus has challenged us this morning about what we value in this life, what's most important to us, and to not worry about material things and not fixate and, and worship material things, but to focus on God and to, to focus on eternal things, things that last forever. He's challenged us on our money, on our time, on the things that we worry about, but he really challenges us here, what is the most important thing in our life? And the Lord Jesus says to us to seek after God's kingdom to seek after God's things, to put God first in our lives and to follow after him. And if we do that, God has promised that he will take care of everything else. We can trust him and we can rely on him because he promises us. 
Maybe you, you are not a follower of Jesus. Maybe you've not thought about these things before. Maybe some of this is new to you, or you've not made that decision to follow Jesus. Well, before you can enjoy what God has given you, before you can um, not worry and trust in God, um, Jesus says this to us first. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus says to the disciples, follow me. And this is his command to put him first and follow him and give our whole lives, yield our whole lives to him. This is what the Lord Jesus means by to seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. We need to put the Lord Jesus first in our lives. We sang that song that, that Lewis had for us earlier on, knowing you, Jesus. You know, to put Jesus first is worth it. Jesus is interested in eternal things. Jesus, who came to earth, who, who lived a perfect life, who died and who has risen again from the dead. Jesus is alive today. He's alive in heaven. And because of his resurrection, that means he's alive forevermore. And Jesus promises us that if we follow him, if we put him first, we can enjoy these eternal things and we will be with the Lord Jesus forever in heaven and we will live forever. Jesus cares about our souls. He cares about who we very are. He wants to save us and he wants us to be with him in heaven forever. But we need to follow him. We need to commit. We need to make a choice. Again, at the, at the end of this section, the Lord Jesus splits us all into two groups, those that listen to his words and accept them and those who don't. I wonder what choice you've made this morning. Are you following the Lord Jesus? Do you value the, the eternal things in life, the eternal things that God has made, that God has given us? I just leave the challenge of the Lord Jesus with you again this morning. For all of us, what do we value most in this life? What do we care about most? What is most important to us? The Lord Jesus challenges us at every aspect of our life to follow him and to put him first and to yield our lives to him. He wants us and just encourages us. The Lord Jesus loves us and he wants us to follow him. He wants us to put him first. And I leave that challenge with you from God's word again this morning. Let's just um, again speak to God in prayer. Father, we just give thanks for the Lord Jesus. We give thanks for his love for us, for his death on the cross for us, and for his resurrection back to life. Father, we just praise you for your son. We give thanks for his care for us. And we give thanks for his words that we've been able to hear this morning again. We just pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to each of us individually and really challenge us in our hearts. Father, where do we value things? What is most important to us in our, in our lives? And Father, we, we give thanks that following the Lord Jesus is worth it. We think of the eternal things that you've promised us. We think of the, the fact that we can trust in you. And Father, I just pray for everyone gathered here this morning. I pray for everyone listening through Zoom as well, everyone in Bethesda. Um, just speak to us, Father. We want to hear your voice this morning uh, and to really consider these eternal things. I pray that everyone listening, Father, you would speak to our hearts. Look after us just now for the rest of the day and be with us. We ask these things in Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen.